So this is an extension. This lesson is an extension of what we were doing the other day. The other day we did um, converting degrees and radians, right? Because we're trying to figure out about how to work back and forth between degrees and radians when we're talking about circles because most of trigonometry, we're dealing with radians. Um, today, we're going to talk a little bit about circles, but what we're really going to focus on is coterminal angles. Right? Yeah. Thank you for telling me that. I really appreciate that. Let's see what we got here. I was wondering why I could see you guys. The good news is, is this is all that's on the whiteboard that you've missed so far, is me writing the words coterminal angles. Um, now, coterminal angles are angles that start and stop in the same place. But when you think about things in terms of a circle, let's see if I could do this well. Part of me kind of wishes I used canvas for this because they let me put shapes on things. Like they'll be like, oh, here's a circle, where do you want to put it? That's not a bad circle right there. If you think about a circle in terms of angles, say I have an angle here on a circle, pretend that went to the center. Um, you've got the angle that measures from here to here, right? Whatever that measurement is. But this angle also, if I have negative angle, measures from here to here. So you have more than one angle with the same initial end, edge of the angle and the same terminal edge of the angle. And we call those coterminal angles. So, so coterminal angles, what they really are is angles with the same start and stop point, right? The same initial and same terminal sides. So two angles with the same initial, oof, that's not, there we go, initial and terminal sides. Right. We will get to how to solve those in a little bit. But what I first want to talk to you about is we discussed in the last class degrees and radians, um, and we talked about those kind of measurements, right? That that we measure circles in two ways. Let's see if I can let's see if I can do this as well again on on another one of these. Already it's not looking as good. My lines are not as straight. I'm trying to make it bigger this time. So let's see. So say I've got this circle. And there's things we know about a circle that you've known for a long time, right? You know that you start at zero degrees. And if you come all the way back around, it's 360 degrees, right? And you know that halfway through is 180 degrees, right? We know a right angle is 90 degrees. And we know, what well, we can gather that this is 90 degrees more, which is 270 degrees. And these are our degrees around a circle. And there's several other stopping points when we're working our way around a circle. What you might not know though is the pi version of it. And I went over a little bit the other day where I talked about when we were talking about radians and how a radian is we take the radius and we kind of uh, the length of the radius and we wrap it around and that'll give us one radian. And then if we wrap it a little further, another radian, and then we do it 
one more time. We've got three and a little bit more, like 3.14159 radians all the way around a circle. I mean, all the way around the half circle, right? So this is our 3.14159 radians. So halfway around a circle is equal approximately to 180 degrees, right? If we go, if we keep going all the way around, well, that's another measure of pi. So the entire circle, if we go around it, is 2 pi, right? So halfway around the circle is 1 pi, or 180 degrees. All the way around the circle is 2 pi, or 360 degrees. And when you see measurements that look like, pi over six or uh, two pi over three or 13 pi over six. If I have counts like that, those all fit in to this circle somewhere because the circle is just a ring. We can keep going. In the same respect, I can have something that's like degrees. I can have 30 degrees. Um, I can have 120 degrees. I can have 740 degrees. And you're like, how can you do that? The circle is only 360 degrees, but you can wrap around again until you get there. Um, and that's kind of what I want you to think about because you're going to be given lots of degrees that look like they don't fit, but we just keep wrapping around. Um, if I have pi over 6, what I want you to think about when you get something that looks like that, we're going to start with pi over 6. We know that that's like saying one sixth of pi, right? Pi divided up six times. We know that if I start here and work my way around to here, I'm at pi, right? So what we're saying is we're going to divide pi up evenly by six parts. We don't necessarily know what pi itself is, but we do also know that it's equivalent in terms of a circle to 180 degrees, right? So we could go one-sixth of pi is the same as one-sixth of 180 degrees, right? Which is going to be 30 degrees. So at 30 degrees, a 30-degree angle, call it like that. I'm probably off a little bit. This would be pi over six or 30 degrees, right? Do another 30 degrees and we've got two pi over six, right? Which is 60 degrees. If I reduce this fraction though, it's just pi over three. So if I have 13 pi over 6, imagine this. This would be 1 pi over 6. This would be 2 pi over 6. 60 plus 30, well, that's 90, so that's 3 pi over 6. Add another 30 degrees, right? 90 plus 30, we got 120. Add another 30 degrees. What do we have? 150, right? So here we've got... 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6. We could reduce the fraction. 4 pi over 6. This is 5 pi over 6. This is technically 6 pi over 6 because when I reduce that fraction, we still have 1. So what we're saying is we're breaking this half of the circle up into 6 parts and we're breaking this half of the circle up into six parts. 
Does that make some sense? Am I explaining this well? Does, does anyone need a little clarification? So if I could go all the way around the circle, right? My next one would be seven pi, right? My next one would be eight pi over six. My one after that, nine pi over six. We can go here, we can go 10 pi over six. 11 pi over six. And here we've got what? 12 pi over six, which makes sense because 12 divided by six is two and that would leave us with two pi. And so you wanna think of it in terms of how, when you look at that denominator of the fraction and you've got a pi, right? You've got pi over it, you're gonna go, well, all right, well, I just need to break this up into this many pieces, right? Whatever that denominator is, is how many pieces you're gonna break that top half of the circle in. So in this case, it's six. If it was three, we would go 180 degrees divided by three, and that would be how, how many degrees we break it up into. If it's four, we'd go 180 divided by four, which is 45. So every 45 degrees would be pi over four, one pi over four, then two pi over four, then three pi over four. Um, and we're going to get into more in-depth stuff with this when we start talking about the unit circle, which will be really soon. But because you're going to be dealing in coterminal angles with, with pi, it's going to make sense to you that uh, this works. So I put in all these pi's around here, right? But they also all have degree measures. And we have the degree measures here. We've got 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 180. Would, this one would be two. Oops. Oh, I got the pen upside down. I'm like, why is it erasing? It's got an eraser on that. This would be 210. If I add 30 to that, this would be uh, 240, right? And then we've got our 270. If we add 30 to that, we've got 300, 330, 360, right? All of those make sense because we're going 30 degrees at a time because one sixth of, the, of pi is 30 degrees. So every time we have something with a sixth, we're gonna move 30 degrees. So if we're talking about pi over six, which is our first problem, we know that it's gonna take us to the first sixth of pi, right? It's gonna take us right here. But what happens when we have 13 pi over six? Well, the circle ends at 12 pi over 6, right? We got 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi, 7 pi, 8 pi, 9, 10, 11, 12, which is 2 pi. For 13 pi over 6, we just go up one more, right? If this is 12 pi over 6, then we start our way around the circle again, and we get 13 pi over 6. They are the same. Does that make sense? I can go around the circle again. This one would also be 14 pi over 6, 15, 16. We could go on forever because we can keep going around that circle. The thing is, is it's still only going to land us within spots inside the circle, no matter how many times we wrap around, just like a clock, right? The clock is a ring and we can keep going around and around and around. And we still only have those same 60 numbers going around, right, that, that get us to uh, the hour. Um, but we wrap around the clock over and over again. We do it one, two, three, like we count them in, in 12s or 24s, technically 12s on the clock. But the time still does keep changing. It just keeps changing more than one time. But we can still only land in certain spots on the clock. And on a circle, it's going to work the same way. So we can do that in six. We can also do it in fourths or thirds. Now, thirds are always kind of part of six because all our threes go into our sixes. Um, 
we tend to break it down in 45, uh, 30 degree, 45 degree, 60 degree, 90. We try and stick with those for the most part because they're the ones that come up most when we're dealing with right angles. Um, but you can do, use whatever denominator you have and break the circles up like that when you're looking at a ring for coterminal angles. Um, so given now that you know all of that craziness that I just gave you, and we're talking about coterminal angles, get back to that, which is the main focus of what we're doing, coterminal angles. If I have a circle, I feel like I'm pressing my luck doing this over and over again. One's going to be really bad at some point. It's going to look like a football. So say I have an angle that starts here, right? And here. And we say this one is pi over six, right? That we have an angle that measures pi over six. This is our initial, right? This is our terminal, right? When we count in this direction, this angle is pi over six radians. But what if we go in the other direction, in the negative direction? We're still starting here at our initial and ending in the same terminal, right? So it's not going to be pi over six radians. And the way that we determine what that coterminal angle is is if we're starting with a positive angle, like we are right now with pi over six, we're gonna take that pi over six and subtract two pi. And that's gonna give us our coterminal angle. So what does that look like? Well, we have to have a common denominator because we're dealing with fractions, right? So we would take that pi over six, which is fine, because that's the only one with a denominator that's gonna stay the same, but we need to create a, a denominator of six out of this. So we just have to multiply the numerator and denominator times six, and we would get minus 12 pi over six, right? And when we subtract 12 pi from pi, we get negative 11 pi over six. And that is our terminal angle, right? This right here is negative 11 pi over six radians. If we're given a negative angle, right? So given a positive angle, we add two pi, right, to get terminal angle, or right, I'm sorry, coterminal, coterminal. If we're starting with a negative angle, Sorry, we subtract two by subtract. I'm off this morning. If we're given a negative angle, what would you suppose we do? Yeah, we would add. We add two pi. If we're dealing with degrees, right? This deals with radians, right? If we're dealing with radians, we do this. If we're dealing with degrees, it works the same way only when we're dealing with degrees. 
we if uh, uh, don't want to start with we uh, given a positive given positive degree. We subtract. What, what what do you think we would subtract with degrees? If we're subtracting two pi, which is a whole circle with radians, what would you think we would subtract with degrees? Perfect, William. Three hundred sixty degrees. Three hundred sixty. That's terrible. I missed writing on whiteboards, that's for sure, like real whiteboards. So given a negative, we would add. Does that make sense? So neither of these are very difficult. It's the only thing that you have an assignment on today. Um, I kept it short because I was trying to explain all of this circle stuff dealing with pi radians and how you break that up. Um, I'm not going to give you an assignment and how you break that up, but I know that it's time consuming in the explanation. So I didn't want to get into the central angle and stuff like that when you hadn't seen any of this before. Um, so if I have 30 degrees and I want the coterminal angle, I would take 30 degrees minus 360 degrees and it's going to give me negative 330 degrees and that would be the coterminal angle when it came down to doing it in degrees i think it's fairly simple when we do it that way um does anybody have any questions in regards to this does anyone need any further explanation All right, on that note, then I'm going to stop the recording. I'm going to give you guys a, a, a chat box question that will be your participation.